Hi everyone, it's Natasha. I thought I'd play around with the Grand Madison window and the flower box steel dies that I just picked up from um, Uzag.com. They're from Poppy Stamp Inc. Which is the company. And there you go. Out of Seattle. So I grabbed a couple of rosebuds that I thought might be nice in the windowsill and I have a cream color uh, card base so I'm just going to use these two dies. I have a smaller version of each one but I think I'm going to use the larger one for the overall effect. So let me cut these first and I want to definitely cut these out of the white paper. So let me grab my cuddle bug. And the paints I need to cut that, which for the cuddle bug, it's the A, C, and the B. And I know my B is all beat up, but I don't mind because this is I'm gonna lay it down the die down on the C plate and then aim it up like this with the die up. Then I'll put my cardstock over it and then the B plate. So the B plate gets beat up and I don't really mind. So let me see where I just saw my white paper stack. I wish I could whistle to it and make it appear. It was just here. It must be in between these. Here it is. It's another recent paper that I use, so. I definitely want to use the white and I use um, my favorite which is American Crafts cardstock in the white because it has a little bit of a texture. I'm going to trim that down and use that for the window in the window box. So let me just use my trimmer. To get the um, paper cut down. I certainly don't want to waste more than I need. So the actual die is three and a quarter. So if I cut it three and a half by four and a half, that should be enough. So I'm going to do four and a half. I can probably cut a couple of them, have them as standby by three and a half. And then I'll have a little strip left over for the window sill, or for the window box. And then I have some, I think, summer papers that I could use from the recent, um, Six by six stack purchase that I got from that are the um, my mind's eye. Hmm, maybe some of these teal. Although I did pull out purple flowers, none of which really kind of go. Maybe some of these green ones. I'll take a look at the design at the deck at the pattern paper in a second. So because this paper has a tooth on one side and it's flat on the other, I'm going to take the pattern side down and just move these aside and move this in front so you can see it. So I have the die um, cut side up on the C plate and turning my paper upside down on top of the die and then adding my B plate and running it through. And you'll hear crick cracking, and that's perfectly fine. Watch out for the snap back on the wheel, turn wheel, and it cuts through really easily. There's a little bit of embossing too. If I could find my crease pad for my cuddle bug, I would run it through with a crease pad because then it would really make the lines stand out more, but that's fine. I'm going to run this through one more time 
and I do try to center it because the greatest pressure, because this is a roller system, uh, both Cuddlebug and uh, Sizzix machines are run on rollers. The biggest pressure or the strongest pressure will be in the center, so I'm going to make sure that I run it through that. So I'm just going to run it one more time, and then I'll cut the window um, box. It's probably time for me to upgrade my B plates. They're getting a little icky. See that cuts cuts very smoothly, and I'm gonna hold on to the little refuse pieces because I might be able to do something with them. So there's really no waste when you trim your paper down. So that's all I had as extras. So now I, I'm gonna grab my grand flower box guy. It looks like this, and I have a strip. Cut for it. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to place it in the middle, in the center, just to make sure that I get the greatest amount of pressure on it. Cuts up really easily. Now, the reason that sometimes it's time to kind of give up on these plates, even though they haven't cracked, is all of these cut lines will sometimes transfer into your paper. But as you can see, because I flip it over, actually you might not be able to see it. On the back side you could see the transfer, but because I flip it over, it's not transferred to the front. So that's good. So that's all set. I'm going to put my dies aside and take my cuddle bug out of the way, and then we'll pick out some papers to use for the... design. So I have cream color base and I want, wanted the white for it to stand out and I have I, I did cut an extra one. But let me take a quick look at some of these patterns of what I could use in the background. I could use a green. That might not be a bad green to use. And even the purple flowers would look nice against that in any of these shades. So that's a possibility. Now the other thing that I could do is some of these cool images. I could take my frame and place it over it and see how much of that I want to I want to be able to see like this would be a cool image to have in the background. But I also want to add a couple of little swags of curtains. So this looks like you're peeking indoors, inside, to see what might be on the wall. So that's kind of a cool one, so I'll keep that in mind. This looks like wall, totally looks like wallpaper. Well, hello! That might be cool. And this green looks nice with the purple flowers as well. So I guess any of these papers would be nice in the background. I should check the back pages, back sides of them as well. Alright, if I want to have some kind of pattern, this looks like a gingham. I'm playing around with these dies. I just cut this out of the. Let me show you the die. I'm making a card with it. So I pulled out some flowers and I cut out the window box as well. So I'm just going through some of this pattern paper and I have a cream, cream card base already folded. So I'm just looking through to see which pattern paper I want to use. I kind of like the idea of using this page as the background behind the window, but then maybe add some pieces from this side of the paper 
as swags of curtains and then the window box in the front with the flowers in it so let's pull this page out I think this would be a nice one and this is from lost and found breeze collection and the clicking sound you hear on the recording or on the video live whichever you happen to be on is my camera focusing in and out <laughs> I have not figured out a way to bypass that so unfortunately it's one of those things that you'll have to kind of bear with me so since I have this cream base I thought it'd be nice to have a nice pop of the white so this is cut out of the white and I think what I'm gonna do is do something like this so it looks like you're peeking into the house and you see things on the wall so I'll use this portion and I'll just freehand cut it and glue it to the inside of the of that um, window box, window frame, it's like that. I think I need, and then I'll use. Sorry, of course, you know, the moment I record, the dogs go. So I'm going to use this <laughs> this paper to make a couple of swags, maybe like halfway this way and a little bit here. Just so they're kind of peeking out like that. So let me place this where I want to kind of create that image. I think that's good. I'm just going to mark it so I can... Mosey, you know I'm funny. So I could trim it down because I want to be able to... I'm just going to glue it on the inside. And luckily because I have stripes on here, it's easy to... <laughs> Sorry, it's not one of my recordings unless Moses is making himself known, right? And let me see how much I need to trim. Then once I have that all attached, I'll add the curtains and I'll put this on dimensional and I'll choose another pattern paper to put on the background. Okay, so that's almost... That's pretty good, huh? Probably trim this off just a little bit. And then I can glue it right on there. So I can put a... Oh, I need to trim this down just a hair. And I hear my lovely birdies, chickies, talking in the kitchen. What I could have totally done is run this piece uh, through the die cut and it would have created me, the, given me the four squares and I could have glued them in that way but I kind of like having a solid piece because I do want to put it on dimensional. Okay, so that's just where I want it. But before I can glue this piece, I need to just make sure I don't misplace that. And if anyone's wondering, um, I had an incident um, I smacked myself against something and totally bruised up within like moments. Alright, so. If I use a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna put this. Um, I'm gonna put the curtain swags on first, then this back piece, and then I'll put that on dimensionals. So I need to grab a pencil because I don't wanna have my pen mark lines visible. Grab my trusty black pencil and I'm going to place it. There's some text on there I don't want to capture. Move that out of the way. Well, I 
If I told you the God's honest truth how that happened, you'd all be falling off your chairs laughing. I'm not sure if I'm ready to out myself as a total klutz quite yet. I can erase all this once I trim it out. box fell behind me. <laughs> and these don't have to match on both sides because you know curtains are never going to be pristine. I'm going to save these little pieces because I could use them. And I drew on lightly enough that I could erase it without becoming too obvious. Okay. And actually, the funny thing is, I left the top of the paper on, and it does look like a curtain. <laughs> So all I have to do is glue that on this way. So see there's a shadow of a curtains inside. And then this layer will appear this way. But I think I want to add edge the curtains in some ink. I have gathered twigs near me. Let me see how that looks on this paper. It's just I, I happen to have used that most recently. Yeah, I think that makes it look a little worn and antique-y. Because the base layer is cream, I think that'll be a nice little contrast. And I suppose if I want to be really fancy schmancy, instead of gluing it directly to the window, I could put it on dimensional, so it'll be three layers of dimension, so it could give it depth. So let me see how that looks. So here's the curtain, and there's the window. I think I am going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put let me see how that lines up. I think it lines up just like this. So if I put dimensional on here and put that on, this will be that'll be good. I'm just using these little pop-up squares and they're white they should kind of melt into the background and I wish I had some strips left but I don't so I'm gonna have to use these along the side as well hello to everyone who's just joined us I'm making um 
a dimensional card using the window frame and window box flower box dies and I've just cut out some curtains and I'm adding dimensional along the side because I want them to be each layer to be dimensional so I cut the windowsill out of white cardstock American Crafts cardstock the lightly textured on one side and then my mind's eye breeze collection I pulled out some pattern paper I think maybe one more here one more here right, let me dry fit it for now to see so there's the base I'm going to go on like that so there's already dimension being built in and then be one more layer of dimension but that'll be nice okay let me pull these off and adhere that someone needs to come up with a device where if you have all these little pieces that you need to pull the backs off of for, for adhesion, you could just put it down and it peels them all up. Anybody want to come up with that? So you don't have to do this individually. Although that went faster than I expected. Okay, so I'm going to turn this upside down and I think I have it. Let's see, how am I going to do this? Oh no, it's on the wrong side. This is trickier than it looks. <laughs> I think I left this as high as I can, like that. Okay. See how there's depth to the little curtain? I could pop another little square underneath there. So that might be an easier way to slide that underneath. Perfect. One more over right here. Okay. And this is the background paper which is also going to go all the way up to the top but I think I want to add that in dimensional as well so it'll be even another layer of depth now who mentioned saying something about putting up a shade I wish I had a little chandelier that would be really cute hmm. could I stamp a chandelier I know I have a really large chandelier, which is too big for the scale for this. I could make a little hanging pendant 
on some wire. Oh, actually, you know what? I just got a die that might look just right there. Let's see if I put it away. I did. I'm thinking this little flower pot die from Quick Cuts turned upside down with a little chain would look like a light um, hanging pendant. And I know exactly where they are. They're my little tin. Right here. So I think that might be nice um, cut out of cream because it's just too much white and I need to introduce a little bit of color. Let's see if I have a cream piece of paper I could use. it's a lot of little steps for a little card but sometimes it's a little details that really make a difference I'm gonna make sure this really gets cut out so here's the two little pieces I am going to edge just to give a dimension. Where's my ink? You don't see what I have on my desk all the time? <laughs> Dog bones. This is gathered twigs. Tiny little things like this really do require some assistance being held, otherwise you're just inking your fingertips. I'm going to grab some glue to put that on. And then I think I need a little piece of chain there's my little lamp shade maybe like that and a few dimensionals I haven't done a lot of videos lately. I save all my um, used up little pieces because I trim them down and use them for something like this. I've been on vacation and I kind of injured my foot the other day and I was in a lot of pain. 
so I didn't feel like doing anything. I don't, I don't like to, I don't like to complain or make a bigger deal out of something, so I just kind of stay in the background. Does it look silly? Does this not look like a lamp hanging upside down? Like I need to. The chain's not really going to be visible, so there's no point to add it. But I am going to add this on another layer of dimensionals here, so then it'll be like that, so it won't touch. I am recording this whole thing. I did start from the re you know, recording part. Oh, I really like the dim look at the. You really see the depth and the dimension when shadows hit it. That's pretty cool, right? And the cream will bring in, because I'm putting this on a cream base, so it needs to incorporate it somehow. Okay, so I'm going to add another layer of dimensionals here. So these tiny little $1 dies really come in useful, because I thought I could have freehand cut it, but at least this way I didn't need to. And if I want to, I could put this on the foreground as a little pot with flowers as well to correlate to the... Um, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to cut the edges off of these to create some strips for myself to put along the sides. You know, I had just complained about not having strips, but there you can make your own. That's why I love recycling stuff. I never throw this out. Can you imagine if you just threw this out, you would have lost half of the dimensionals because the punch, the half inch punches themselves is not everything. I mean, the dimensional is on everything. So let's see, I could do, I think I'm going to have to double up on the base. When I first saw these dies on Uzak, I was all excited to order them, but they were out of stock. And when they came back in stock, when I got that email, I was super excited. And I spent more than I had anticipated to, but I figure if I don't, hi Dan, if I don't get them now, I'm not likely to get them piecemeal. So I got the large window in the large window box and the small window in the small window box. Okay, so I'm going to center this hopefully where I want it. That's pretty good. It's a little lower but I think that that's it's okay. To double up here. Okay, so the base is. Look at this. Wow, this doesn't leave me a lot of room, does it? For the planter box. I wonder if I should just do the windowsill. just do just the window cell or just the window I definitely need some pattern paper on the background let me see what coordinates that might be nice
I know I could add the flowers if I put the planter box on, but there's not a lot of room, wiggle room. I kind of went big with the window, so if I put it all the way up top, and then add this Let's see which of these flowers I want to have. Let's see. Muted ones. These are two purple. These have just a touch of purple, but I like the contrast of these purple ones. Alright, so I'm going to use those. Just clean up some of my junk off my desk. Okay. Obviously I'll trim those down a little bit. And first I want to put the background on. I like that complementary colors. Um, I could use a bigger card. This is a standard A2 size. And I wanted to see whether the standard A2 size would accommodate the window. Um, the window itself and the window box and I think I can make it work because I have another one that's smaller but since I've already done all this layering to this one I think that I want to use it so I'll make it work um, let me trim just trim down this paper so I'm gonna have that in the background it's almost a masculine card, dare I say. <laughs> just make sure that this is really an A2 size and not just one of my note cards. Four and a quarter by five and a half. So I need four by five and a quarter. Sorry about that glitz paper. It usually comes back in stock. It's a new collection. It's not an older one. So just keep your eye on it. If, were you able to add a remind me when it's back in stock? I'm just knocking down some of that white core color off the cut edges. You might want to do um, a Google or Bing search on the Glitz Design paper name. Putting pink Glitz Design on. I'll show you where it's available. Where else it's available for sale. Because it is a new collection. I can't imagine that people. That it's not available. You know, sold out anywhere. Okay, so I have my card base. Did I miss the whole corner there? Back of this, it's a really beautiful paper, but I think I want the f I want the background to kind of sink into the background. This would compete too much. See, 
and the white makes it stand out less than this is more pleasing to the eye although I do love this paper like this back side of the paper So it's this really kind of palely distressed houndstooth and like a greeny turquoisey color. Alright. Now I definitely need to build this up. I didn't think about the fact that because I layered this so much, I'm gonna need to It's ding <laughs> my webcam is dinging every time um I move the per the anything that's in front of it, move it up for it to focus or move it back. Unfortunately, I haven't found figured out a way around that yet. I need to do a little research because that that does seem like it's an annoying thing to have to deal with. Hmm. I hadn't considered the fact that I layered this so many times that now this is going to have to be on like these uber <laughs> large let me pull a couple of these flowers out every time my camera focuses it will hear that it's like a cranking sound kind of thing, but it's really mild. I'm sorry about that, unfortunately. There's very little that I could do about that. All right, I think I'm going to pull out my really thick adhesives. And these are the ones from Ranger. And put them on the back and see if I need to double up on these. It's doing that every time... I move something in and out of the frame or if it tries to white balance against the white. Unfortunately I haven't figured out when it does that or why I can't stop it from doing it. I'm gonna have to double that up. So this card might be awkwardly bulky. But it's okay. Sometimes cards like this I don't end up sending through the mail. They just end up being either included with a present or hand delivered, so that's okay. Or am I just popping into my box for for future use? This is going to be huge. Yeah, I think that's enough to double up on these. I'll take some close-up photographs and post it on my blog because sometimes you just don't see all the details um, even in video okay so I want to leave a little bit of a relief at the top so you could see the designer paper so it doesn't get cut off see my camera just made that sound because flicker every time it does that and then here and I can actually overlap just a little bit here so let me adhere the window and I think, I think I'm going to glue this down. I think that might be the most precise way to 
put it down. And I'm going to eyeball it. I'm going to move this a little forward so I can see where I am. bone folder inside just to smooth things out so there it is look at the amount of dimension you could see the layer of the little curtains they're just hand cut and the little lampshade I wish I had a little light bulb sticking out of there oh I need to get one of those oh you know it would be ideal for that is one of those little uh, battery run micro lights then I can have the push button here somewhere and it would turn the light on oh that might be my hubby that would be really cute wouldn't it I think that's my husband I don't know some other man pulling into the driveway okay I think I want to add for stability just a few here. I'm quite sure there'd be lots of people who'd want this card, but it was so kind of you to offer to give it a good home. <laughs> Honey, I'm still on live. No profanities. No profanities. Huh? What's the matter? You like the way I gave him a, a heads up warning? I figured it couldn't hurt. He is a teamster after all. <laughs> We're both on vacation this week, so we're just kind of enjoying ourselves. We went out to lunch today. Oh, we had the yummiest thing. I had a craving for something, and I'll put pictures up on my blog of what I had for lunch today. It was so good. And I'm sure some people will cringe, but I craved it, and I, it was stuck in my head. Like, I really, really wanted it, so I went and got it. So I'm going to have to be really good the rest of the day. It, um... It was smelt. Fried smelt. It was so good. It was a basket full of fried little tiny smelts. Like the kind you can eat whole. It was so yummy. I love fish. I've always loved fish. I think because I grew up on water. Yeah, it's, they're tiny little fish that are like the size of my pinky. Actually, the biggest one was the size of my pinky. So they deep fry the whole thing, and it comes out crispy and yummy. Oh, so stinking good. Gosh. All right, I'll have to keep that in mind, not to make it quite so dimensional, because then you have to compensate on the window. So, so I think I need a few more. It's really good, and there's not really a lot of places around us who make it, because we don't live in the Midwest. Smelt are really big in the Midwest. But, we do have a place um, on the lake that has it. So we went and ate on the lake today. It's not far from our house, but, like, we had a big venture. And then we stopped at a couple of consignment places. Oh, and I did buy something. I guess I could share with you guys what I got. Yeah, it's a acquired taste. It's not for everyone. I'm quite sure of that. It's not something that people will be like. It's kind of like sushi for some people, I think. It's all love it or love it or leave it. Well, luckily these little foam things aren't that hard to come by. All right, so. And this is, oh, I had one already popped out. So, the, and it's my own fault. If I, had I not 
triple layer this I wouldn't have to create such a depth for th for the window card or for the window box but there you see there's gonna be more of a dimension so I have somewhere to tuck the flowers in oh I love sushi too that would be my I'm actually might ask for sushi tomorrow for lunch Although if I wasn't such a lazy sod, I would just make it at home because I know how. Although it always seems like such a production. I mean, I have all the supplies, but you know, making the rice and... It's fun. My sister and I have done that before. Like we've had sushi dinner where her and I will make the rolls and put them together and the boys just, you know, our husbands just sit there and wait for us to make new rolls and they eat it. We should have put a tip jar out. I'm going to add color through the flowers. I think I'm going to need more than just these. Let me plug in my hot glue because I think that's going to be the most efficient way to put them in. It's definitely a, an, a, a process to make sushi. It's not easy. It's You have to have all the supplies, but you know, once you buy the supplies once or twice, you kind of have everything. Uh, I'm thinking of keeping it monochromatic. Maybe I'll add a couple of different more purples. Well, let me see. Let me see what other purple flowers I have. Let me just clean this up because this drives me nuts. Let me put some of my stuff away. You guys don't mind, right? You can hang out. If not, you can watch the what I'm sure is going to be quite a long recording. But people have been asking for step by step, so that's why I've been recording my use streams and putting them on on YouTube. Let's see what else I have. I have some little cream sweetheart blooms I could use. Um oh let me see if I have any purple ones. Oh I can use this sweet little purple butterfly. I've been kinda eager to use that. I have some heather. I think I have some purple heather too. I'm just reaching what's within, or looking around to see what's within reach. Um, I don't think I need any trims. I have these little sweet purple roses. And these deeper ones, deeper purple. I could do pink. Pink looks nice too. And I have all different sizes of the pink flowers. I'm definitely not lacking in flowers. I just have to decide which ones I want to use. You like the pink better? Okay, let's look at the pink then. Let's take the purple out of the formula. I'll leave the heather. I wish, I think I have a size in between these two. And not the lilies, local. Don't fit in. Hold on, let me see what I. 
Yeah, these are bright fuchsia. Now that's a little too bright. We'll see how these would look. Um, I have cherry blossoms, so let me grab some. I have these pink ones too. And I have pink butterflies too, so not to worry, I have plenty of butterflies. Oh, cherry blossoms are your favorite? Let me see what colors they have in the cherry blossoms. I found some beautiful colors of cherry blossoms, which I think match green. Hmm. These match the paper. I also have these lavender tipped ones. Then I have some aqua open roses. And then I also found... the medium size of these so I could put a nice assortment of the medium and the small into the window box. So what's the consensus? These I think are just too large. The scale would be completely thrown off. So I think I want to stick with the smaller ones. I'm telling you, it's like I have a U.S. Office of Wild Over Crafts here. I have a lot of flowers. Smaller, open, and closed. I think maybe some of these and these. I'm sorry about the crinkle right now, but that's not a... favorite of many people. Just make sure that I match up because there's two different color pinks. Okay, it's these two match and these two match. So I could do that. I wonder if I have any rosebuds in pink. So you, you're getting me at kind of, you know, the whole start to finish because I don't, I didn't pre-plan any of this. I had an idea of what I wanted to use, but I didn't, you know, I didn't have a formula or anything. So this is basically how I create. I kind of put stuff together and then audition the spots of where I, things are. I think I'm going to leave some of them on stems and trim them down because I kind of want to have them elevated just a little or vary the length. So let me just fold these in half before I trim anything off just to see kind of where I want them. And the stems can be curled or trimmed or cut down or cut off entirely. 
I'll check to see if I have any... Oh, I know I have some white leaves. Those might be pretty to have here because we've got such a kind of a white on white monochromatic look going on. And then some with shorter stems tucked in because I really want to fill it fill it in. What do you think? Is that random enough? I think the pale pink is a nice element. Let's see if I have any. Tiny pink butterflies. Actually, I think those are too pink. I have this little iridescent one that almost looks white, but it's actually pale pink. I think I prefer that one more. And maybe one on the flowers somewhere over here. Oh, I have a cut. So let me start gluing those in. I almost wish I had a sash of pink ribbon here. Oh, you know what? I have some ribbon that's that color. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot I wanted to use this. I could have used my little tiny balls ribbon as the curtain sashes on the inside. I have to keep that in mind for the next card. Can't remember everything. <laughs> okay, I have some ribbon in here somewhere. I know it's, it hasn't been put a, put away nicely. It's, yeah, it's not, it's kind of demure. <laughs> Toned down, I guess, I don't know. Alright. So I have this one, I wish I had it in wider strips. It's like it needs like a little something, a little something something. Maybe not this. I think I just had my on my trims. Uh, I 
I just okay there. I wonder if I have any seam binding with the light pink. You know what? Since I've already put the first layer down, I think I'm just gonna have to let that go and finish that. Alright, so three butterflies and the roses like this. So let me just I'm gonna add the large ones in first. And I think I am going to twist them a little. Because I shorten the stems. And this I'm just going to stick in the glue. Because I want that one elevated just over the window. And then this one's going to be off to the side. Tucked in. Maybe I should just like that. And one tucked in over there. I might go back and glue some of the heads down once I get them tucked in. Ooh, the, these come out like funny globules. And I know that the front of that will be covered because I'm going to add another little one in there. have some gorgeous flowers, that's for sure. And I'm thinking maybe one tucked in here. And then a few butterflies. I think I want to have one over here to bring that pink up there. One on the flowers. Tucked in one over here. So there you go. I think if I had a nice wide sash of pink satiny kind of ribbon, and if I find one, I'll definitely add it, even if it's just going to be two pieces, one on either side of the windowsill, like where my thumb thumbnails are right there. But that's it. I'm definitely gonna have to add a layer of probably pattern paper in here, um, something mild from that collection, just make it sturdier because the front is now so front heavy. <laughs> but I think that's it. I, I, I love these two dies. Quite happy with the way they cut out. I love the layering. This would be really sweet to use on a layout because you can put like an image of your family or, you know, put a photograph in the background with the same kind of effect of adding a few layers of curtains you can use fabric or seam binding would be really cool if you gather it up here like hot glue a couple of strips of seam binding and then bring them over and then tie them behind there and then have the photograph in the background and then layer it up so it gives you that whole dimension 
Well, not too shabby. Um, took about an hour and ten minutes because one, I was yapping, and two, I was looking for supplies. Um, now that I know that I definitely need to keep the layering on the window um, frame itself smaller in order not to be forced to use all this on the window box, although this window box is really sturdy. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. So all of these pretty flowers in a couple of different sizes and you could still see some of the stems. If I find any um, semi-open rosebuds, I might tuck them in here and there, but otherwise I think I might just leave it as that. I like the little butterfly kind of fluttering off on the frame here. And my makeshift flower pot up, uh, turn upside down for uh, a light source. Again, it would have been cool if I could use one of those little push button micro lights to light that up because then it would be just that much cooler. But yeah, it's missing just a little something something here. And I think it needs to be in pink. So if I find it and you see if, and you see the pictures later on my blog, um, with a couple of strips of maybe seam binding, I think what I need to do is look around and see what I have in way of seam binding. So there you go. I thought that was a pretty quick stream, something to try out. Try out a couple of my new dyes and some of the beautiful Wild Rocker Crafts flowers. So there you go. If you have any questions for me, um, shoot, I'm going to stop the recording at this point. Thank you for those of you who are watching the recording. For those of you who are here to um, keep me company uh, live, thank you. Thanks for watching.